Proverbs chapter 19. Better is the poor that walketh in his integrity than he that is perverse in his lips and is a fool. Boy, we talked a lot about fools. We've been talking a lot about the lips. Better be broke and living with your integrity than you being a liar, being perverse in your lips. Also, that the soul be without knowledge. It is not good. Your eternal state has no knowledge of God, no knowledge of the Bible. That's not good. And he that hasteth, hurries up, run with his feet, sinneth. You're so quick to do something. You're in a hurry. You don't think it out. You don't pray it out. You don't get counsel. That's a sin. See, when was the last time that sin came up in the pulpits in the world? I won't have me be charged at the great white throne judgment and the judgment seat of Christ. Moving with your feet too quick. The foolishness of man. Can't get off that fool, can we? Perverted his way. A fool and where he is going is perversion. Because the Bible says the fool has said in his heart that there is no God. You can be a religious fool and still not believe in God. And your way is perverse. And his heart, the foolish heart, fretteth against the Lord. Irritated, bugged. I mean, we got... A hymn, we got a song that says, fret not. Here's, here's a fool, he's fretting against God. I wouldn't want to be a fool. And we did a massive study of fool. You need to go get that study and all the, the study of the fool. Because I found myself, as a Christian that loves the Lord, I found myself foolish in many avenues. Wealth maketh many friends. But the poor, and we talk about the poor in verse 1, the poor is separated from his neighbor. Uh, who's that? that guy can't help me out. That guy can't do anything for me. The Bible says you're to love your neighbor. So, Proverbs says you're to love your neighbor even if he's poor. A false witness, a liar, shall not be unpunished. You tell a story that's not true, you falsify your, your information, there's punishment. And he that speaketh lies I, I, I said, you know, there's the politician, there's the used car salesman. And I came across one the other day. I forgot what it was now. There's an occupation just around, surrounded by deceiver and lying. And I forget what it was. Shall not escape. If we were to draw the conclusion of pastors, fly. I can think of one pastor right now. He just lies, lies. He gets a laugh. He lies to get a laugh. Ha, 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 ha. Man's filled with pride. He's going to stand before God one day. <laughs> Listen, to, to get a lie for to make people laugh, it's still a lie. And you will go 
and not have escaped. We'll come to this in a moment. Many will entreat the favor of a prince. Politics. Whatever government you are, a prince is a man that's in the politics. He's in the realm of a kingdom. Mordecai got the favor of the king. Esther got favor of the king. Joseph got favor of the king. The Bible tells us that Peter was brought in where he denied Jesus. He was brought into that room by John who, had, who knew somebody. Paul got favor. One of the books that he closes, he says, them of, of Herod's or Caesar's house. I forget which. Every man is a friend to him that giveth gifts. Oh, somebody's got something to give you? Oh, they're friends. That prodigal son had all kinds of friends till the money ran out, didn't he? Friends, I mean, gifts don't make friendship. And friendship doesn't get gifts. Look at, look at chapter 18, verse 24. A man that has friends must show himself friendly. It doesn't say a man that has friends must give gifts. That was Jacob's thing. Give everybody a gift. Appease everybody to a gift. That's called buying. And like the prodigal son, what do you do when your money and the gifts run out? And you ain't got nobody. There are people who just love free things. And I had somebody, you know, everything was free. I couldn't teach that person, you know what? Yeah, it may be free, but somebody paid for it. There was a, I got Facebook, I got a couple news agency newspapers on my Facebook and it. They wrote a thing about something was, was free. And I wrote, just a simple comment, no Bible verse, anything like that. I just wrote, nothing is free. Somebody has to pay for it. And you won't believe the, the nasty comments that came my way. It's the truth. There is nothing free. It comes at a cost of somebody else. My salvation was not free. It came at the cost of the pain and suffering and death of Jesus Christ. It came that Jesus Christ had to leave the holy uh, 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 abode of heaven to come down and be born in this miserable, sin-cursed world. How dare a man... I know what you're saying when you say salvation is free, but let's look at it on the hands of Jesus Christ. It wasn't free. It was quite painful and suffering. All the brethren of the poor do hate him. Poor is not spoken about very highly as the fool in Proverbs. Solomon is the king. You know he's writing about Jerusalem? I know a poor man. Guess what? His family hates him. That's the poor testimony of the king of Jerusalem. Of the people, the Jewish people of God. And it was in the law they were to help their poor brother. Solomon says, hey, how much do his friends go far from him? He's got friends, but they keep away. Maybe he had gifts. And now the gifts are gone. And now they're gone. He pursueth them with words. Maybe the gifts are gone. Okay. Come on, where's my friend? Come on, let's be friends. Come on, let's go. Yet they are wanting to him. There's no power. I can imagine there were many words of the prodigal son 
And there were probably many thoughts when he's down there in the pigsty. Where are they? Where's Fred? Where's Charlie? Where's Where's the good times? Where are they? And we said last night, talking about friendship, friendship is better than family ship because family you're born into, friends you choose. Here is somebody chosen by others, and we see the brethren hate the poor man. That's being born into a family. But here is a guy whose people has chosen him to be friendly. Where are you? Where'd you go? What happened? Didn't we used to? Not a see you out of here. Goodbye. Those weren't really friends. I want to see something. Luke chapter 15. 15 or 16. Didn't I? Let's see what word it uses. The Holy Spirit is very careful with this word. Luke 15. No, it doesn't even send friends. It says, Luke 15, 13. Not many days after the youngest son gathered all together, he took his journey to a far country, and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in the land, and he began to be in one. That's what we're reading about now. The Holy Spirit did not, Jesus did not put in Luke about the, they were his friends. Jesus knew what friends were. You know why John's called the beloved apostle? Because he's the one at the cross of Jesus. He's at the one at the breast of God listening to the heartbeat. So even the prodigal son, it does not mention friends because they weren't friends. He that getteth wisdom loveth his own soul. Wisdom of God. Knowledge of the holy. He that keepeth understanding shall find good. Look at verse 2. Also that the soul without knowledge is not good. But he that keep his understanding findeth good. Knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of God, his words, and the holy. Not the knowledge, wisdom, understanding of how to work on an on automobile. Not the knowledge, wisdom, understanding how to get an A. Not the knowledge, wisdom, understanding to get, get money. A false witness shall not be unpunished. We just read that in verse 5. It's repeated. It's a verily, verily. He that speaketh lies, verse 5 says, shall not escape. Verse 5 out of 9 says, shall perish. According to Proverbs, lying ranks right up there with adultery. We can't put degrees on sin. All have sinned. To him that knows to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. And when we see good here, we see good was knowledge and understanding. Let's look at Revelation 21.8. Revelation 21.8. You better believe God has something about liars. And you better believe out of pulpits of the world or America. From the pulpits, I have heard lies. Revelation 21 8. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and the murderers and the whoremongers and the sorcerers and the idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake that burns forever, a lake of fire and brimstone, which is the second death.
Now, a saved man does not go to hell by lies, but he will end up with wood, hay, or stubble. And we got to realize if you're in a pulpit and you tell Baptist lies to get a story across, that's a lie. You're going to be found as a sinner. Now, let me tell you what a Baptist story is. I sat under quite a few churches. I won't tell you how many. But amazing to me that three of those pastors I sat under, how remarkable a story that all three of them told to the greatest detail that both that those three pastors have been involved in that story identical to each other. And then when I went to seminary and I studied my classes and we, we had a class, I forget what the title was, but it was it was church, it was in church history. And I learned a lot about those classes. I learned a lot about church. One of the things I learned in the class was all heads, all heads down, all eyes closed. Yeah, I see that hand back there. And no one raised their hand. I found that to happen too. And another thing was, part of the lesson I learned, that there are typical Baptist stories of the pulpits of pastors that they will give as an illustration and they will make the story to themselves. And as I said, I sat under three pastors that the same identical story happened to them in their life and it's a lie as much as santa claus is a lie as much as the east easter bunny is a lie as much as the tooth fairy is a lie so are baptist stories why can't you just say this i got an illustration let me say this man and this man did this and this man had why do you got to make the story your life when it is not your life. I had another pastor tell me one time, great advice. And out of the pulpit, he said, you know, there's one way you can get rid of that lying spirit that's in you. If you want to get victory over that lying spirit, and the Bible calls it a lying spirit. After you told that lie, do about face, face the person that you said you lied to, Walk up to that person and say, I lied. What I told you was untrue. And let me apologize to you at that moment. And that spirit of lie that has come out of your mouth, it's going to think a second time. Because if I tell another lie, that moron is going to turn around and tell it on me. Why don't we, that moment we tell the story that we lie? Excuse me, wait a you know, what I just said? I just lied to you. Pride, lofty, proud, but I'm a Christian. What do you think God thinks of lying Christian? What do you think your character is when you lie? He that speaketh lies shall perish. What about the Christian? Rewards, crown, and inheritance may perish by our lives. Delight is not seemly for a fool. Back to the fool. He has no delight. Much less for a servant to have rule over princes. That last part impossible think about this in the white house there are offices under the president of the united states and the vice president of the united states there are people who work in the kitchen and i would assume that there is somebody that is a head of all the kitchen staff in the in the in the white house and i would assume that there's somebody that takes care of the fruits and vegetables one that takes care of the meat and I assume that there's somebody who has to do the dishes in the White House. And what that verse is saying is, the light is, seem, is not seemly for a fool as much as the dishwasher 
in the White House in Washington, D.C., is going to stand and chamber the Senate House or the House of Representatives and take Nancy Pelosi and, and put her down for a moment and the Speaker of the House was going to be the dishwasher at the White House. That's not going to happen. You're not going to have the President of the United States of America. He's in the Oval Office and he's got business he's doing for the country. And the man that comes in and empties a waste paper basket in the Oval Office, the President is not going to look up and say, I'm going to have you to be an ambassador of France. It's not going to happen. And as much as those jobs that I mentioned, they are very important, they're not going to be put in that position, it is a fool that has a delight. And yet in the world, advertising, if you get our product, if you do what we have you to do, if you buy what we have, you're going to have your this wonderful, great, and a fool and his money will be soon departed. Like I said, out of the entire Bible, there's one or two fools that are good, and all the rest, and you need to get our study of fools in the Bible, it can be found on our Hayward family uh, website. And you need to go through all those lessons, all the times that we went through fools and foolishness and fools in the Bible and we didn't do folly, I'm sorry we didn't do that. You need to look at that and say, oh, I'm not good as I thought I was. That's what I did when I went through, when I finished that study. There were times when I finished that study and I would repent to the Lord that I spoke about the fool and I was. The discretion that's the carefulness of a man deferreth, I think, to mark my Bible, his anger. The carefulness of man, the Bible says, be angry. Hey! But sin not. Uh oh. And the Bible says, be angry. But Discretion, prudence of a man says, all right, that's enough anger. That's long enough. You can stop right there because it's going to be a sin if I go any further. Now, I am angry with people who cuss me out when I'm preaching the gospel, but all right, that's done. Now I pray for their soul. Are you angry with those people that, no, I'm not angry. I'm angry at that moment, but, okay, be angry, sin not, now let my prayers turn to them. That's a man that has prudence, that's a man of discretion. Yes, I'm going to be angry, someone has hurt me, but i got to let that anger go away and I can't sin. And the Bible says, be angry, sin not, let not the wrath, but something about with the sun going down. Diligent, discretion, and prudence would be for a husband and wife. We're going to stop this argument. We're going to kiss. We're going to make up. I am sorry for what I had part in that. You're sorry for what part you have in that. We're going to go in bed. We're going to hold hands. We're going to go to bed peacefully and not as sinners. That goes for siblings. That goes for the church. Second Advent passage, the king's wrath is as a roaring lion. There's Jesus Christ. But his favor as dew upon the grass.
pureness is that do? I used to remember back in the dark ages when I went to school. I'd get up early in the morning to meet the bus, and I remember you would see the do. I worked third shift with the newspaper, and I drive, and you, I would see the dew in the winter become the frost and become the ice. And the Bible says about dew. I wonder if they put this in the science book for the kiddies in school. It says the dew upon the grass is the favor of God. I wonder if that's how they put it. And Jesus Christ is coming back in the wrath of a lion. But to the sheep nations, to the goat, I mean to the sheep nation, and to the nation of Israel. As that dew upon the grass. Not mad at me. Imagine what 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 Rahab felt in Jericho. Now, I don't know if she knew the battle plan of marching around the wall, but that moment when, when Joshua said, Shout! And Ray, Ray had, may had a little bit of fear, but I've been promised by, the, by God's children, I'm going to be protected, me and my family. And that moment when, when those spies went into Rahab's house, all right, come on, let's go. They come with us. You and your family that's in there, you're protected. That's the dew upon the grass. Everybody else in Jericho, it's the wrath of the lion. Rahab and her family pictures the sheep nation and the children of Israel. Not under the wrath of God. Can you imagine what Rahab felt at when, when, when Jericho was finally conquered? Thank you. God. Imagine what those sheep nations and Israel's going to be. Thank Jesus. And Jesus looking over, you're welcome. Or to the Jehovah Witnesses, and be, oh, thank God. Jesus turned, you're welcome. What, what, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> All right. A foolish son. Oh, we're back on the foolish again. Is calamity to his father. There is no good foolish son. And if you are a foolish child of God. God says you're calamity. You're calamity. Now let's feel sorry for this guy more. Here's the father. The contentions of a wife. Now the husband. Are a continual dropping. That's the first time dropping shows up. Calamity is great misfortune. Now you got contention. This woman is arguing. She's mean. She's nagging. Nagging. What's the continual dropping? You ever get that drip? Drip. 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 There's a Chinese water torture of, of water dropping. Ever been in the middle of the night in your home and, and it's raining outside and, and oh. Man, there's a leak in the room. And there's nothing you can do, Dredd. Just put a bucket and make sure, oh man, that bucket going to get filled up before in the morning. So here's a man, he's got a foolish son. Now he's got a contentious wife and his life is just miserable. And there are women out there, well, my husband. I've got to say, lady, are you the problem? Or is your husband the problem? Because it may be the woman that's the problem. It may be the husband. It may be the children. House and riches are the inheritance of fathers. There's inheritance. The Bible says that Jesus is preparing us a mansion. The Bible says there are riches, gold, silver, and precious stones of the Father in heaven for his sons. And a prudent wife, oh, here's a good wife, is from the Lord. 
So if the prudent wife is from the Lord, where do you think the contentious wife is from? I'm going to give an illustration. This not happened to me. But this is a kind of funny illustration that illustrates the story. There's a church service. And right in the middle of the church service, the devil walks in. And everybody gets out. Including the pastor. They run out the windows. They run out the... And there's this one guy sitting up, up front of the church. And the devil walks in. He says, well, why didn't you run? The guy, the devil, the guy turns to the devil and says, I've been married to one of your daughters my entire life. I ain't afraid of you. And you may say, ha, 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 ha. I didn't tell that story to be funny. There are wives out there who are of the devil. And I met some of those wives. And lady, you're going to stand before God one day. You're going to have to give an account. Now, I'm praying for a wife. Yes, I am. And it's no mystery. I'm asking God that I get one of his daughters. A prudent wife. A prudent wife is, okay, my, my husband makes X amount of money, so I can't reach X. Now, X is one of the final letters of the, of the alphabet. You know what that prudent wife, she, she won't pass L. You see what you mean? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L. She won't spend M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, X. She's going to save. A prudent wife will know how to cook. A prudent wife will know how, all right, instead of going buying new shirts, I can fix the shirt. I can wash the shirts. A prudent wife would keep track of the stuff that's in the house. And when we get to Proverbs 31, if we ever get to before the Lord comes, we, you know what? You go into the, into the supply closet and you're not running loose or running short. A prudent wife would be, no, we ran out. I was going to get that. A prudent wife would be, yep, got that. Uh -oh, I got to put that in the grocery list next time I go out. A prudent wife would know, I, I'll say that to my husband or I don't say that to my husband. A prudent wife, I'm not going to listen to that gossip. I'm going to have nothing to do with that gossip. And if you continue to gossip, it, I don't have anything to do with it. A prudent wife will study her Bible. A prudent wife will pray with her husband. A prudent wife will read the Bible with her husband. A prudent wife will be able to be trusted by her husband. A prudent wife wouldn't waste time. That's of the Lord. And everything opposite I've said is of the devil. Slothfulness. Laziness. Cast is into deep sleep. Snooze alarm. The body wants more sleep than what's needed. And an idle soul shall suffer hunger unless you live in America. If you live in America, you want to be idle, you don't want to do anything for a living, America will give you now a little plastic card and you know what? Today you can have your groceries delivered to your house. Oh, we are just lifting up laziness and bounding. America will have to give account one day. <laughs>